Morning, apologies for the imperfect lighting conditions this morning. Unfortunately, I can't move the car in order to fix the problem because of the test I'm about to run. Today, I'm gonna to demonstrate one of the little conveniences that comes from owning an EV in the winter. On a cold winter's day like today, having cabin preconditioning can be a real benefit. It is a properly cold winter's morning out here today, at least for the UK. The temperature dropped to minus four Celsius late in the evening, yesterday evening, and has remained there overnight. Indeed, it has dropped further and the car currently says that it's minus seven. That, car, that means that the car has had a cold soak here where it's been parked. These are ideal conditions to demonstrate one convenience that comes from owning an EV in the winter. In the days when I had to do a daily commute to an office, I used to hate having to defrost the car. In those days, my car sat in a cold, exposed location in a village and would get extremely cold overnight. It was not uncommon to get, the car, get to the car to find it heavily iced and in need of a thorough de-icing before I could drive it. One option was to use a chemical de-icer which alters the freezing point of water and therefore melts the ice. However, I have heard it said that de-icers are not all that good for the car's paintwork, so I have tended to avoid using them. That left scraping the car as the other main option and the one I tended to do most. I have to say though, that's not something I enjoy. Standing in the cold, scraping the ice off the windscreen is not my idea of fun. Because my car got such a cold soak, there were some days where it would start to ice up again even after I had de-iced it. And occasionally I would have to de-ice it a second time before the car was ready to use. And indeed there were once or twice where I used a chemical de-icer de and even the de-icer froze. Perhaps it wasn't a very good one. Technology constantly evolves and brings with it new features. And so it is with EVs. It is very common for an EV to come with an app that allows us to control some features remotely. One of the things we can usually control remotely is the cabin heating system. Using the app on my phone, I can remote start the heating of the car, getting the cabin up to a comfortable temperature. However, it doesn't just heat the cabin, that also heats all of the glass from the inside, and that helps avoid the need to de-ice the windows. So what, I hear you say, I can remote start my internal combustion engine car as well. And yes, some ICE cars do support this, although the difference is that usually what you are starting is the engine. The legality of remote starting the engine is dubious at best, at least here in the UK. The law says that we are not allowed to leave a car running whilst unattended. So this may not be something that you should use here. But even if it is legal, having the engine running is a bit wasteful. After all, we don't really want to run the engine as we are not intending to drive anywhere yet. What we really want to do is to turn on the heating system, but in an ICE car, there is no separate heating system. Unlike an ICE car, an EV's drivetrain does not produce a lot of waste heat. As such, it needs a dedicated heating system for the cabin. The benefit of that though, is that we can turn it on and off separately to the drivetrain. So without much further ado, it's probably about time I use my phone to trigger the preconditioning. This will start the car's heating system, but only the heating system. The car remains locked and only the heating system will start. This will get the car warm and defrost the ice on the car. Normally, of course, I would do this from the comfort of my home so that this happened before I left the front door. But today, for you, I am sacrificing my comfort in order to demonstrate this feature. Okay, so here we go. Let me get my phone out and set the heat going. Then we can watch a time lapse of what happens on the windscreen as it heats up. I'll see you on the other side. You may notice the camera change focus slightly in order to focus on the windscreen if the camera behaves. So I've just pressed the button. It will take a few seconds for the request to go via uh, the servers and 
um, hit the servers, um, hit the car. The car is not permanently connected to the servers because that would flatten the battery. It flashes the lights and um, in a moment you'll hear hopefully the fans spin up, although there is a little bit of background noise with people moving around. So that's the fan spinning up and whirring. I don't know if you can hear that. But the car is now doing its preconditioning. And we'll jump to a time lapse of what happens to the windscreen over the next few minutes. This is later the same day, as I'm sure you can tell from the change in the position of the sun. Unfortunately, it was so cold earlier that the cold eventually killed my microphone and it rather cut me off in my prime. At the end of the time lapse, you would have seen me jump into the car. I wanted to turn the car on so that I could use the wipers to wipe the windscreen, thereby showing that the de-ice was complete at that point. It took just under seven minutes from when I first hit the button on my phone to the wiper showing that the windscreen was de-iced. Now to be fair, that wasn't the thickest ice that I've ever seen on the car. So if it had been thicker, it would have taken a little longer to work, but it does work nevertheless. I should say that the de-ice had also worked on the other windows. You can just about see in the shot that I used that the ice on the driver's window had also melted. Some ICE cars have a heated windscreen to help solve this de-icing problem, although they don't seem to be all that common. I think I've seen them on Fords and maybe one or two other manufacturers, but really not very many. They don't seem to be common. But even if you have one, a heated windscreen only helps avoid work on the screen itself. That does not de-ice the other windows, as happened in this case. The only things I would need to check are the lights and the number plates, both of which are too far from the cabin to be cleared by this technique. In these modern times of LED headlights, we will need to wipe those from time to time, as they don't generate much heat like the tungsten halogen headlights of old. Anyway, with the demonstration done, what have we learned? Well, I've avoided the need to de-ice the car completely because I can run the heating system remotely. And what is more, the car was nice and warm for me to get into whenever I want to do so. This is not the reason to buy an EV. You need much more than this one trick for an EV to be better than an ICE car for you. But an EV is no one trick pony. This is just a little added bonus you get when you buy an EV for all those other reasons. This is a little freebie. As technology progresses, our lives get a little easier and more comfortable. Cabin preconditioning is one of those little advances that you might not even consider to be important at first. But believe me, now that I've experienced it, I would very much miss it were it suddenly unavailable for some reason. And I think you would too, once you make the switch. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments are most welcome in the section below. If you have an EV, is this a feature that you enjoy? And if you're looking to get one in the future, is this a feature that you're looking forward to using? If you've liked the video, then it's helped to me if you click the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you've enjoyed it and YouTube may promote it to other people based upon that. And of course, click subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks.